Hello! This week we're going to talk about solving trigonometric equations, and there are a few building blocks we need to put in place before we'll be ready to solve a full-blown trigonometric equation. The first little idea I want to talk about is the idea of principal angles. Now for every single angle that we can possibly draw on the Cartesian plane, all those angles whose values are real numbers, positive and negative, big and small, every single one of them has a principal angle. And the good news about this principal angle is that it's an angle between 0 and pi by 2. This is how we've gone kind of full circle. We talked about angles in the Cartesian plane. They can be any real number. But now we're bringing it back to triangles, in fact, just to acute angles, so angles in right angle triangles. So here's how we can find a principal angle. Let's say we draw an angle in standard position in the Cartesian plane. So let's say that my terminal arm is there, and the angle is, I don't know, let's say we went around clockwise for this, so it's a negative angle. That's my theta there. Then the principal angle is always the angle between the terminal arm and the closest arm of the x-axis. So here's the closest arm of the x-axis. There's the terminal arm, and that smaller angle between them is this one right here. So this is the principal angle here. Now you might notice that there's uh, what the actual green angle is, theta, doesn't really matter. All that matters is where the terminal arm is relative to the closest arm of the x-axis. So if we had a different angle, let's say one that went around like that, and we called that, let's say, beta, it has the exact same terminal arm as theta, and therefore they have the same principal angle. So for every single uh, principal angle, there's going to be infinitely many different angles that have that principal angle. Okay? But the good news, again, is that principal angles are always between 0 and pi by 2. They're always angles that exist in right angle triangles. Let's see what it looks like if my terminal arm, say, is in the second quadrant. Okay, so here we've got uh, a terminal arm, maybe for this angle here, let's call that one theta. Then again, I look at my terminal arm, and I find the closest arm of the x-axis, that's this here. And my principal angle is going to be this small angle here. Okay? We always treat it as positive when we talk about it, and we'll do some concrete examples in just a moment. Let's do one more example. Uh, I don't know, let's choose a terminal arm in the fourth quadrant. And how did we get there? I don't know, let's say we went clockwise that way. That's my angle theta. And then my principal angle, it doesn't really have a direction. It's always going to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay? So let's say that my theta was negative pi by 3. Then my phi here would be positive pi by 3. Okay? It doesn't really have a direction, whereas our original angles in Cartesian uh, in standard position in the Cartesian plane always have a direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. All right, here are some pictures, very abstract. Let's put some numbers to all this. So let's say I draw the angle pi by 3 in the Cartesian plane in standard position. There would be my terminal arm, and that's pi by 3. Okay. If I want to know the principal angle that corresponds to it, well, I take my terminal arm. The closest arm of the x-axis is the positive one. I'm looking at this angle, but with no direction, and clearly it's also pi by 3. Okay. So pi by 3 is its own principal angle, and that's certainly going to be true whenever you have an original angle between 0 and pi by 2. Okay. But for any other angle, the principal angle and the original angle are going to be different. So let's say I look at 5 pi by 4. Okay, so pi by 4 is half a quadrant. So that's 1 pi by 4, 2 pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, 4 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4. Okay, so my terminal arm should be down there. Counterclockwise, since it's a positive angle, there's 5 pi by 4. Now if I look for, I've got my terminal arm. The closest arm of the x-axis is the negative one. 
That means this is my principal angle right there. And from how we've constructed 5 pi by 4, we know that that angle there is just pi by 4. Okay, we went pi by 4 beyond that negative arm of the x-axis to get to our terminal arm. What if we have a negative angle here? So I've got negative pi by 6. Going clockwise. Now my principal angle is clearly right here, but I always count it as non-negative. So it would be positive pi by 6. We don't really think of a direction for that principal angle. All right. Let's do one final example here. Let's say we've got 8 pi by 3. Now well, pi by 3, there's 1 pi by 3, 2 pi by 3, 3 pi by 3 is the negative arm of the x-axis, 4 pi by 3, 5 pi by 3, 6 pi by 3 is 2 pi, that's one full revolution, 7 pi by 3, 8 pi by 3. Oh, I can do better than that. So 8 pi by 3 is a full revolution, counterclockwise, ending up there. Now if I look at that terminal arm, where's the closest arm of the x-axis? Well, it's the negative arm of the x-axis. My principal angle will be that angle there. And what is that angle there? Well, we know from how we built up 8 pi by 3, it's got to be exactly pi by 3. Okay, so there's the principal angle that goes with 8 pi by 3. So the punchline from all of this is that every single angle in, uh, that we can ever possibly imagine, be it positive, negative, large or small, any real number at all, we can draw it in the Cartesian plane and from that we can find its principal angle. And the nice thing about the principal angle is principal angles are always between 0 and pi by 2. It means they always live in right angle triangles. Thank you.